So right now, in our particular schematic, we have the output circuit ready and we have the ECS2200 circuit ready. The next thing that we would do is go ahead and create the circuit for the 8284. So once again, as we do it for all the others, this is the clock IC circuit. Then this is document number two and revision code one. Now, let us simply assume that that 8284 is also not present in the library. So what we would do is we would create a part for that as well. So the process is similar as to the uh, ECS2200 that we just did. So we go back to sample project. Once again, click on the particular library into which we are feeding all of our parts. And we right click on that and do a new part. Now this one is an IC. So let's just do a sample project 8284A. And any IC is the reference prefix is U, so that is fine. And the pin number is visible, so we do an OK. And then again, this one opens up. So again, on this one, we create a box. And this one, we keep it a bit long because there are quite a few pins on there. Now we go back and refer to the data sheet and see exactly what we need to do. So if we open up the data sheet for 8284A, we would see that on the input side, there are so many pins, and then on the output side, there are these five signals. So when you are creating a schematic part, you do not need to be very conscious about the order in which you place the pins on the particular schematic part. So you can group it logically. So what I would do is, like in here, the X1 and X2 come from the oscillator. So what I'll do is I'll group these two together. Then this ready one, ready two are kind of similarly named signals, so I'll keep them close, as also with AEN one and two, and then the rest of it. And then I'll keep these on one side, and then the outputs on the other side, so so on and so forth. You will see as we create it. The actual layout of the chip is like this, so from this one, we would take the pin numbers off. That's the only thing that we would do. So let us go back and start creating it. Let us do the outputs first because they are smaller in number. So we create a pin. One of the pins is called P clock output pins. The number for P clock is 2. So we name it as 2. It's a scalar and this one is of type output. We put OK and we put it here. Then again we click on there. The next is clock output. We go ahead and see what's the number for that. It is 8. We put the number 8, same scalar and output, so we put another one over here. Then there is a ready output. Let us look at the number. It would be 5. Then we have the oscillator and uh, the number for that would be OSC is 12. And then we have the reset output. And the number for that is 10. So that would be all of our outputs. And that's the output part. Now let's come to the input part of things. So what we start off with is something called a C sync and pin number is 1. So C sync pin number is 1. This is of type input and we put it on the other side. Then what we do is we start it up the next one which is AEN1 and AEN2. Now the pin numbers are 3 and 7 respectively. Also notice that the AEN1 and AEN2 are active low. So the way that you represent active low in schematic symbols is either by starting them with a small n, so n AEN1, or what you can also do is do a AEN1 underscore on this side, 
or do a underscore a e n one whichever is your preference so I'll go with the n a e n one and the pin number for that is three and it's of type input and I'll place it here now one thing you will notice is if I just simply click another time I would get directly the NAEN2. So if you have a number at the end of your name and you click it again and again, that number auto populates. So that's not a problem. But the issue is the pin number also advances by one. But in here, the pin number A for AEN2 is seven. So the way that we can do this is we can click on the pin that selects it entirely, right click on it do a edit properties and just simply change the pin numbers over here and you will get a NAEN2 with a 7. So then let's go to the ready ones RDY1 and RDY2 they are on pins 4 and 6 so let's do that so RDY1 it's on 4 it's input OK and again I press twice and then select the second one and edit properties to change its pin number to 6 then what else do we have left then we are done with AEN we are done with the ready we just have the RES EFI async and FC so let's do all those and X1 and X2 obviously so okay RES RES is on 11 so it's again active low so NRES and 11 type input and we place it there once again what do we have we have F slash C bar so that would be F slash N C and the pin number for that was 13 then there's another one which is EFI that's pin 14 so we do another one which is EFI and that is pin number 14 and we do OK so that is there and then what we are left with are pins X1 and X2 which are 17 and 16 and then the ground and VCC so let's do the X1 and X2 first so 17 and 16 so X1 17 you place it a little bit off from there so 17 and if I press again I get the X2 but then it is 18 so again I need to go ahead and edit that so that it is 16 and lastly we have VCC and ground so let's name it as such VCC it's on pin number 18 it's a power connection and pin visible okay and then there is the ground which is on pin 9 so ground pin 9 and again it's a power and pin visible and we do a okay and then we have those two remember one thing there may be uh, ICs in which there are multiple VCC's and grounds on different pins so on the data sheet it may not it may just be named as VCC all the way through but on your schematic symbols remember that you would have to change the name to reflect VCC1, VCC2, VCC3 otherwise there are conflicts if pins with different numbers are named as the same so remember that now since we are done with this the box seems to be a little too big so we are going to resize it and take it up that's one and also there is this other dotted box which needs to be taken up to agree with the other box that we have so that we do not have inordinate amount of white space left and the value for this is 8284A so okay so that's our part so let's save that now if we go to the 8284 circuits page and we try to place a part now what did we name it as we named it as sample project 8284a right so we try to place it here and there you have the part that you have just created okay so 
that's all about creation of the part now in the next video what we would see is how you can change something on the part if it needs to be changed uh, in a way and then propagate that change into instances of it that you have put in your circuit so on to the next one